So we're going to do a demonstration of three different power supply testing measurements. And we'll start with the 3000T. So I have my high voltage probe and my current probe connected to an AC to DC power supply. I'm, right now I'm connected to the AC input. So let's go ahead and set up the scope first to measure what we call AC power quality. I'll go into the Analyze menu, select Power Application, then select Analysis. And here you can see the various automated power measurements I can perform. Power quality, inrush current, um, current harmonics, switching loss, slew rate modulation, and down here at the bottom we have uh, a couple of frequency response measurements. We'll show that in just a few minutes. Let's go back up here and select power quality. Go into the signals menu. Shows you how to connect up to the AC input and you can assign which probe is voltage, which is current, and select how many cycles do you want to perform this measurement on. The default is two. I'm going to change it to five and then just select Auto Setup. And right away I can see, first of all, I got a little bit of uh, need to degauss. We have a very ugly uh, sine wave in this video studio. I don't know what's going on here. Lots of glitches, but we can still measure the power quality of it. So the yellow waveform is the voltage waveform. It's supposed to be a sine wave. The green waveform is the current waveform. It's pulsed. And then the purple waveform, it automatically turned on waveform math and multiplied voltage times current to give you power. And now if I select Apply, it automatically measures the power factor. Real power, in this case, about 330 milliwatts. Apparent power, reactive power, crest factor of voltage, crest factor of current, phase angle, and the RMS, which it says it's only about 1.63 volts. And so there you see how easy it is to set up and measure power quality. Let's do another one on the AC input, and that's called current harmonics. And go into signals and select auto setup. Now current harmonics, what it is, is various different types of electronic products, they have to meet a specification for what type of harmonics they might be injecting back into the grid, the AC grid, say the 120 volts or 240 volts, and they must comply with these harmonics, otherwise they could disturb other equipment. So it set itself up automatically for 20 cycles. I press apply, it's going to do run an FFT on the current waveform and then bring up a table here that's pass fail. Here you can see we're all passing. The purple waveform is the FFT on the current waveform. And you can select different types of compliance uh, settings. So it's based on the IEC 61000-3-2 Right now we're doing a Class A uh, compliance test and a test up to the 40th harmonic. Now we don't have time to do a demonstration of all the other power measurements, but let's do a control loop response test now. So I'm probing a DC to DC converter, probing at the DC output. Let's select the control loop response measurement. Notice down here in the bottom we have two frequency response measurements, which are basically Bode plots. Power supply rejection ratio and control loop response. We'll select control loop response. This is an important measurement. It measures the stability of the feedback network in the power supply. You don't want your power supply oscillating. You want a nice, clean output. And that's what a control loop response will tell you. Let's open the setup dialog. We can sweep as low as 10 hertz all the way up to 20 megahertz. Let's start at 1 kilohertz and go up to, let's say, 10 megahertz. And I'm going to change my input amplitude, test amplitude, to 350 millivolts. 
Now, normally, people in the past have used network analyzers or standalone frequency response analyzers for this particular measurement. But Keysight innovated this measurement capability in the oscilloscope before any other vendors. So let's go ahead and run the test. The green waveform is V out. The yellow waveform, which looks very noisy, it's actually switching noise on the output of the power supply, that is V in. The blue trace you see creeping across screen, that's the gain trace. The red trace is the phase trace. You can read the gain on the left and the phase on the right. And you can see the grid here goes from 1 kilohertz to 10 megahertz. And then when it completes the sweep, it automatically measures what's known as phase margin, which occurs where the gain crosses 0 dB. It says we have 49 degrees at about 50 kilohertz. That is good. It says we're probably not going to oscillate. The other important point is where the phase crosses 0 degrees, and that's called gain margin. And we have about 12 dB of gain margin at about 129 kilohertz. So this is a good test here.